So, we're back to the last and hopefully the most interesting for you session of my, of my part of this, of this workshop. And I already gave you pretty much the game plan before breaking into, into the break, right? So now, before we actually jump into it, I'd like to ask everyone to stand up and go over to that corner. And the reason I wanted to get you out of your seats is because for this session we might not be sitting in those same seats, yeah? So that's a good way to start it out and to start fresh. Don't worry, you'll be able to collect and move your stuff, you know? You don't have to fear about that. Okay, so as I explained before the break, what we'd like to do now is to complete our journey from pure theory, a case study taking theory into practice, to now really taking you to a place where you can have the beginning of a plan for how you can integrate some of the concepts that we've been discussing around innovation platforms for your own work. So to make it most useful, it really has to come from you. Yeah? So before we do any other configuration, I'd like to ask, by show of hands, who has an idea, a project, an initiative that they're either actually working on or would like to work on, where they'd like to spend the next hour, hour and a half or so with colleagues and resource persons getting feedback on and starting to sketch out. So if you have such, please read, oh great, one hand, two, yeah? No, not all of us? Okay, so let's, let's start hearing a bit about the ideas. Actually, I have uh, one project we are uh, try to organize with the NGOs. <laughs> Because my, in my ministry, there are uh, around 55 NGOs working international and local NGOs. Uh, I'm from Cambodia. I'm from the Ministry of Rural Development. So the NGOs, they get fund from, uh, you know, abroad. They make a, they call a saving for change. So it's a community funds. So the problem always when the NGO, they finish their project. So that group is going to be male after you know, the NGO. So now we want to make sure those saving group sustain. Even the NGO left, that group still sustain. So now I'm trying to work with the NGO about those, how to make that saving group community to become sustainable. So is the group can help us how to think about that, I think that would be nice. Because when I go back there, I will, we actually we form already a group, a working group with the NGO. So we're gonna discuss about that when I going back. So that's that the idea I want to, Wonderful. Thank you very much. May I already invite you to pick a table? Yes, you can pick your own table. There are advantages at raising your hands first. Okay, some other, some other hands were up. Please help me again. Yes? Uh, actually, we have um, an ongoing project, uh, a tripartite project with Sirica. Uh, with the local government and then the academe. So um, we have just started the, uh, the project entitled Rehabilitation of Calamansi Industry in Victoria Oriental Mindoro. So what we did was, of course, uh, the, uh, the PRA. So we identified the uh, potential commodity. So we had identified calamansi. So why calamansi? So calamansi during the previous years, was uh, in which Victoria was noted to be the most popular producer of calamansi. But then there came a time that um, calamansi was already dying, was dying during the time. So I, during those previous years. So what we did, so we asked the farmers, we asked the farmers, um, why is it that calamansi industry is already declining? So <clears throat> some, par some farmers, uh, deviated from the uh, deviated from the um, from producing calamansi, so they opted to go on uh, other commodity products. So we tend now to rehabilitate rehabilitate the calamansi industry to the help of Shirka. 
and of course in coordination with the local government and then the academe. So with the concept, concept of the IP and then the innovation platform, so we'll try to strengthen more the, um, the strategies for the industry. Okay, so I am Leo Piglar from Capiz, and our province is known to be the seafood capital of the Philippines. And uh, one of the major um, productions that we have, which um, is now uh, extinct, is the dual production, or we call it as the angel, angel wings. Okay, um, yeah, um, I had this uh, proposal submitted to for institutional funding um, entitled the uh, rehabilitation and the uh, know uh, legislation on uh, rehabilitation and conservation of the angel wings in Capiz. So um, um, the project or the the situation is there was no existing policies when it comes to the harvest and the breeding season of these uh, angel wings. So my proposal is to make some policies and uh, alternative policies regarding the, the situation. Thank you. And please find yourself a table. Okay. We have, we have four more tables left, but if need be, we can, we can make arrangements. Um, so we've had one from Cambodia and two from the Philippines. Can I see hands not from the Philippines? We'll come to the Philippines again in a minute. Uh, uh, we have collaboration with local government uh, about how to develop uh, sugarcane industry in uh, one province uh, in Indonesia. The issues is about how to uh, increase the productivity of the sugar cane and then uh, uh, how to uh, strengthen the uh, uh, farmer institution uh, of, uh, and also uh, how to um, support uh, local government to provide uh, support facilities uh, in order to make the sugar cane industry um, have a more uh, better in perform. Please find yourself a table. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, actually, since yesterday, we've been discussing on the possibility of us, uh, me and my table mates, <laughs> are actually discussing about the possibility of collaborating on a, on a common project. We actually came up with an acronym for it already. <laughs> it's called ALIVE, uh, Alliance for Learning and Innovations for a Viable Enterprise. So ALIVE. I, I am coming from a livestock agency from the Philippine Carnival Center. Ronan and Iam is from Philippine Rice Research Institute. And of course, Dr. William Medrano comes from Isabella State University. So this is a collaboration of research agencies of the government and the academe towards uh, uh, a very meaningful project on, on learning and innovation toward addressing the, the plight of the marginalized uh, rural farmers because based on the innovation platform. Because anyway, we have similar clients. These are the smallholder marginalized rural farming communities. I'm involved in, an, uh, in a project of a big program and the project is called uh, Adaptive Collaborative Water Governance. It's uh, being operational in Santa Cruz watershed, very near here. And uh, this uh, uh, adaptive collaborative water governance seeks to address the problem about water management in that uh, watershed. And, uh, and so we had uh, the formal meeting formal meeting in, to, in 2014 with the stakeholders. So in our terms here, it's innovation platform. We invited stakeholders. And uh, the meeting was uh, led by, the meeting was led by our research findings that indeed there was, or oh, there were problems related to water. 
But uh, the problem then during that meeting was about water pollution. So it, it led us to um, addressing the problem of waste pollution. Okay. And so um, we followed a platform, FACES actually, and it's a four-phase platform. Uh, and we are now on our last uh, year. This year is our last year. And so we would like uh, to continue that, that uh, platform. Not uh, prob probably in the next future with another watershed. But this time, since we haven't implemented yet the what we call adaptive collaborative water governance platform, we would like to implement that first in that uh, watershed before we replicate the platform in another watershed. And so, this is in collaboration with the government institution, One River Council, and the Academe, UPLB. Now, the, the problem... Before we get to the problem, okay. we'll save that to the actual group discussion. Okay, okay. So, Thanks very much, and please find yourself a table. Um, I have no much knowledge for social subjects. Uh, mostly my knowledge concerned with our pure science subjects. Uh, that's why I would like to join this uh, workshop forum, forum workshop. And then after this training, I will obtain many updated information and I got applied in my training center and I got share my knowledge to my trainees. Uh, that's why I joined the uh, forum. But I have not much knowledge, knowledge that it's sorry and I'm still learning. Many learning from you and other participants. So thank you. Then I have a question. Do you want to start thinking about a specific project or do you just want to learn more about the process because right now what I'm asking for is do you want to lead a group for a project in Myanmar on topic A, B or C and have them help you brainstorm and start to prepare it? I have two plans. The one is that I, I want to leave uh, a project so um, that is uh, stay applying for the grant, but not yet uh, confirmed. And so um, I have to lead one project. And the another one is uh, I'm training supervisor. That's why I have to share the knowledge of innovation platforms in my training center. So I have two ideas, two papers. Can you tell us a bit more about the first idea? Sorry to put you on the spot, but at the end, people will need to choose which table they come to. So I want them to have a better sense. So this first project, what is it about? Can you tell the group a bit more? Yeah, we are applying for the project of our indigenous knowledge management, uh, adaptation to climate change. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And please find yourself a table. OK. So in theory, tables are full. But if there's a burning hand, I can take it. Going once. We are. We have also a tripartite uh, project from Sharka, Academ and a local government unit. Our project is uh, rejuvenating the <coughs> uh, jackfruit, banana, uh, vegetables industry, in the, particularly in the municipality of Inupakan, Inupakan Liti, Philippines. So I would like to invite the rest of you to join these tables. So don't worry, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to start yesterday's presentations all over again. But I do want to put up just two slides to, to help jog your memory a bit and to, to help you as you approach this task. The first is this. Remember the typical innovation platform stage? We are here, aren't we? We're scratching our heads here. And you may be thinking of a goat or a sugar cane or fish or whatever the case may be. Yeah? But we want to make sure that we walk away with something that can help you then initiate your platform. 
you probably will touch already on other elements in the chain. They may change as you talk with the other platform members. So it's not set in stone. But in order to make a good case, think about what the focus can be. Think about what gap you're fixing. Think back about Tulsi Devi and the challenges that she faced and how concrete solutions came up. Try to come up with similar pitches of what your group will do. What are the options? How will you deal with issues like capacity development? Are you planning to do a small pilot or are you planning to do something that can scale? What learning and monitoring systems are you planning to think about? Think about all of these aspects. We talked a lot about yesterday, how to set up and initiate a platform, how to facilitate it. We talked about its composition, communications, power relations. Think about all of these aspects as you etch out your plan. The other thing is, and I'll leave this up for you, for you to have as the backdrop, but remember that we talked about five main themes, composition and initiation, coordination, power and conflicts, resources, very important when you're trying to set up new platforms. Are you using new ones or existing ones? Do you need seed funding? If so, who do you think you can approach to help you make that happen? And what do you need to do in order to convince those entities that this is something worth investing in? Is this something that can be an add-on to an existing program that you already have? Or does this entail a new project proposal? All of these things are things that you can be thinking of now as, as you plan this out, yeah? So I don't want to give you too much structure beyond that. I want you to have the, the opportunity to discuss. I'll come around and sit with you so we can have discussions in the smaller groups, yeah? But think about how can you champion this? Who do you need to influence? And what will you do in the next three to six months to try and make this a reality for you, okay? As guiding questions. Any questions before we go into the small groups? Any questions that you think the whole group would benefit from? So we have one hour before we break for lunch, but I'd still like to keep a few minutes for sharing so that you can share with, with the plenary. So let's take 45 minutes now in your groups to come up with a plan. If you like, you can start typing it into a laptop so that you have it for, for you to work on. If you prefer to write it on paper and stick it on things, that's fine as well. But do document your work so that when you leave here, you have this mini, I don't like to say the word blueprint because it's associated with technology transfer and we're talking about the heart of agricultural innovation systems. But that you have a mini blueprint with you to enable you to go back to. Okay? Great. Go ahead. You're not trying to do everything you're saying, I want to work on indigenous knowledge and how it applies to climate change adaptation, mm -hmm. comma, in Myanmar, mm -hmm. I'm assuming, right? Yeah. So you already have a focus around it. And what is your plan for the next half an hour? How do you plan to go about this? Now, in a perfect world, you want to end up with a written record. What can be very useful to have for you is a process map of how you personally Indigenous knowledge in climate change adaptation in Myanmar. We have to initiate first the platform. What is indigenous knowledge and who will be a company for this activity? So we have to target first to local community. So the meaning of local community, we will focus on the most vulnerable regions to climate change in Myanmar. And then we will gather the basic information on the historical data on the climate change. And then, for the, uh, and then in this group, the local people, farmers and head of the village and agricultural extension will make the activity together. So for in here, I would like to explain what is indigenous knowledge in Myanmar. So we have many indicators for the climate change. Uh, for example, we have to look at the insects. Insects, do you know insects? Uh, so, 
uh, this insect, sir, for example, cricket. There are so many cricket you will see in the evening. So this indicator will show <laughs> the tomorrow morning will be very much sunshine. Well, and then another indicator is lizard. Lizard, you know the lizard, yeah. I like the ERD lizard. So they will change their color of the body on their head. So will change the color. So this is one indicator for our climate change. This is mainly concerned with rainy season. So the green color, well sure, very near for the raining. <laughs> so we will decide what will be our focus. So we will be identifying indigenous knowledge. So I already explained what are the indicators for the indigenous knowledge. And we will use the IK to develop innovation in addressing issue of the climate change problems. And we will identify the effect of climate change into the communities who will be the most uh, affected in our regions. So for the identific identification of the option, so we will have the documentation. What are the indigenous knowledge practices to address the um, to address the problems of climate change to respond the problems of climate change, and in this uh, in this feather, this will contain photograph, cartoon, mind mapping, and infographic. So. <laughs> So, uh, in, in our region, so um, the very updated information and very updated technology cannot available. So, uh, we have to use the photograph or cartoon chart and mind mappings and uh, infographics, something like that. So, we could not use electricity in everywhere. That's why we have to use that. So to develop indigenous material as equipment for early warning devices, sir, for example, bamboo stick, uh, we will use the very big bamboo stick. And then we will hit the very small bamboo stick so to make a big sound. So that will be the early warning system for the climate disasters. That's a refined solution. For, the, uh, for this point of view, um, Uh, the government, the government and the author, authorized person in this region uh, will collaborate together to solve, uh, to solve the climate change problem and to set up the policy, how will we cope the problem of climate change. So the government will also help us the absent the community. And we will contact the symposium on climate change in every district. Uh, so we have many different levels for the region. So the, the lowest level is village, and then the up level is township, and then the up level is um, our district. So this is like the municipalities. And then the most up level is our country. So the most up level is country, and the lowest level is village. For to develop the capacity, to develop the capacity, we will practice our drills on disaster and climate change, and we will prepare by using our indigenous knowledge and our our capacity as a base on our indigenous knowledge. Implement and skill to implement and skill up. To develop an, an standard uh, operating procedure in using indigenous knowledge in responding climate change. So we have uh, to use the standard. We have to use the standard operating procedures. So we will monitor the most vulnerable regions. Uh, um, according to the changes of the seasons. So we will monitor again and again and then evaluate the impact and then we will set up uh, what will be the best tool to 
cope the problems of climate change in our desirable regions. So, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, so. Now, there's always a benefit, I said it, going first. The benefit is that so benefited for much more than two minutes. And I was, I was very lenient because I didn't announce my enforcement mechanism ahead of time. So for all other groups, this is my enforcement mechanism. And after two minutes exactly, you will hear this. And if you go beyond three minutes, that will be all you hear. Thank you very much again. What we didn't cover, and it's okay, we can't cover everything in two minutes and you can't brainstorm everything in 30 minutes. But one thing that I said, I think, to every single um, group is, think about what you personally, the champions of the project, need to do Monday morning when you go back. What do you need to do to get buy-in? Because that can be as important as the concept of the project. Okay, next group, please. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is our proposal. The title is Using Innovation Platforms Towards Inclusive and Sustainable Growth in Rice-Based Communities in Region 2. So we came up with the local name, Palay Yamanayon. It's basically Rice Palay. And of course, we want our farmers to improve their well-being. And of course, it has to be done on a community-wide level. That's why it's called Palay Yamanayon. Well, um, this pro proposal is build, builds on this main problem, rice farmers with low income due to monocropping. So based on our data, an average rice farmers only earn 50,000 pesos a year, which is below the poverty threshold. Our goal is first to transform farmers from being crop producers to agripreneur. And of course, it has a lot of mental interventions there or behavioral interventions. Second is to shift from production to enterprise-driven agricultural operations in the community. And then thirdly is to organize the local farmers into a business entity through a cooperative. Our framework would be an enterprise-driven farm diversification, intensification, and integration. So just to give you an idea of how this works, this is basically how it works. Using rice as the resource base, we can actually introduce a wide range of possible options. So, of enterprises to the farmers. So these are some of the rice-based enterprise options that we can introduce to the farmers. First is rice production, dairy buffalo production, mushroom production, vermicomposting, high value crops, and fish. And of course, these are the possible actors that we can tap. That's all, thank you. Very, very nice. I am, I am keep being amazed of how much you can do in half an hour. <laughs> PowerPoint with all the images and everything lined up. I also thought that it was very interesting to see that this group um, brought together five separate branches of um, government entities to work together. In the beginning it was very broad and how you were able to narrow it down. So very nice. And with 14 seconds to spare. Okay, this presentation is just a continuation of what I had uh, given you a while ago. And uh, this is, again, the project about the Adaptive Collaborative Water Governance. Okay, this project is following a protocol which is uh, given by this phases. Phases adopted, there are four phases as I mentioned. And uh, meetings are, have been regular. Meetings have been facilitated by UPLB. It's well documented, transcripts are ready. And um, uh, we are now using it for another project, uh, research. Now, this uh, water governance, the MSC, we can say that from the six municipalities doing their own planning, now they have been involved as one, uh, they have been engaged in one meeting, collaborating how to manage the water resource. Before, we thought that uh, water is a matter of scarcity, but now we have learned that water in Santa Cruz watershed uh, is plentiful, and uh, it's just a matter of governance. The, the problem about scarcity is about governance. But as we move along uh, collaborating and discussing problems, we have learned that the six municipal, uh, municipalities Priority is about waste management, and that is also concerned 
uh, water water quality is the the I, now the the concern of the six municipalities. Now the problem with the the this IP platform is we would like to know the responsibilities of each of the 11 munis uh, 11 institutions engaged now in the IP platform with the addition of one institution which is the Department of Interior and Local Government uh, local government now we will be forging we will be forging a, an MOA and it will be instituted by that uh, department now we would like to see the river council which will be our devi in this case the limas marina which is the acronym of the six municipalities now what we would like to see in the near future is the forging of policy support and also the scaling up of what we have uh, initiated in another watershed thank you Again, I will say, other than the concept, I hope you don't forget to make some mental note for yourselves of what you will do Monday morning to help make this into a reality when you go back to your office. Okay, who would like to go next? Okay, um, this is uh, about the community fund, that's what we call it, because this uh, uh, credit is a lot of a name, different NGO, different name, they have saving for Cheng, there is a community fund, village fund, there are so many names. But in short, there is the money within the community itself. So we discussed with our colleague from Laos, so we come up some uh, few points. But before I give you some background, so we have actually 12 NGOs working with us, so the total of the saving with the community is more than $5 million. But there are still more that we don't have data yet. And the people benefit from that saving is 60,000 people. So right now the NGO is assisted in terms of technical, financial. But what we concern is after the NGO finish their project, those group will also no more uh, saving. They also divide the money among themselves and they stop the saving. So what NGO asks us to help to assist the, the continue those uh, uh, I mean this work. So the beneficiary for this uh, um, for this. Uh, uh, credit, we, we think that they will be increase our income of the uh, community itself, especially for the household. So we will uh, reduce the informal lending because the informal lending is very high interest rate. So the poor people, they have no collateral so to buy in the formal from bank, from microfinance. So they use that money and borrow by themselves, among themselves. So the interest, they go back to themselves. You know? So it's like they borrow their own money, but the interest also go to themselves. So that's why we say we reduce the informal lending. Also reduce the mitigation, migration, because they went to, they go to abroad, to Thailand, to other country to have a job. So aside from that, it's also sharing experience, learning among themselves. They not only talk the, uh, about the, the money, but they also share other gender issues or or whatever you no know, experience among themselves. That's what we think that is also uh, learning. And of course, it's also capacity building, like they can become uh, more uh, self-reliant in terms of financial. So this is the benefit that we think that is important. So the stakeholders is the stakeholder that uh, I, uh, the government, uh, community, NGOs, and private sectors. And the funding, we think that is uh, because we also have fund for that, we will allocate for fund for that one. And the NGOs also. So, I think this is the, our approach. We will uh, provide training to them and legalize them as a formal group, uh, also association, and we make a guideline with NGO. So this is the thing that we can think of right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good noon. Uh, for Real Pakan, Philippines. <coughs> Our project is entitled in Strengthening Linkages Among Farmers, Government, and Industries in Napakan Liti. Uh, composition and initiation of, of the platform, <coughs> uh, representations and composition. Our community is Chakrot. Actually, we have five communities. We have the uh, banana, uh, vegetables, uh, tilapia, Chakrot, and different forest. But 
for the purposes of presentations, we pick up only Jack Port. Study site is in municipality of Binupakan, which has an area of 9,646 hectares and the population has up 2,000 tens since 20,500. Of course, involved we have the municipal local government unit, the academy, BCU specifically, farmers, circa, institutional buyers, processors, the non-government, the national government agencies, the 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 DOL, the NR, the OST, the DTI. FDE, etc., and the non-government organizations. Target beneficiaries, we have 35 farmers. Actually, at present, we have the 18 existing growers for jackfruit, but we plan we plan to increase this number to 35 farmers. Our objectives is facilitated registrations of associations because the Growers, we intend to register this their associations into registering agency, the DOL. Then we have to establish sustainable and viable enterprise, establish sustainable links with market, develop the jackpot industry in Inupakan, increase socioeconomic capacity of the target beneficiaries by providing them sustainable additional income source. And the research issues, status of land ownership. Actually, the farmers in our municipality has no land title, so also they have did not own their land. Usually, mostly the farmers are tenants. The access to market and then pest and diseases. Jackfruit plants has experience in our municipality. This so-called Petopthora disease. So we. That is the one of the issues. Ability, availability of supply for quality planting materials. Because planting materials in our areas is so not so available due to the last two years, the Yolanda, all of the municipality in our in our municipality in neighboring municipality in Liti specifically. Have planted this jackfruit, so planting materials for jackfruit is very insufficient. Coordination and facilitation of the platforms, the process facilitation, 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 baseline profiling to identify the beneficiaries, identification of industry players, markets and enablers, permission of technical working groups, identification of study sites. Stakeholders meeting discuss the objectives of the innovation platforms. Understand the agenda of its stakeholders. Have a common understanding of the current situations and issues. In coordination and facilitations of the platforms, we conduct small group meetings and iterative process to have a deep understanding on the situations. Identify the constraints. Purely formulate. Alternative practical solutions to address the problems. Engaging other players and enablers, create link with market and processors, coordinate and top government line agencies that call to assist in improving the value chain of jackfruit in the area. Coordinate and collaborate with the local government unit to review some existing projects related to what we will be doing and for monitoring and evaluation to sustain the operations, especially after the inline course of the project. That's all, thank you and good boy. And what you can see is that when you try to apply this to existing projects, you can very quickly drill down a lot of details. So once you actually bite into your project, you know, you can really flesh this out. Our program is about innovation platform uh, for improving performance, the sugarcane industry development in Gorontalo. Uh, uh, one of uh, central production uh, of sugarcane in Indonesia. This is the condition of uh, sugar production in Indonesia. Uh, the area and the yield uh, tend to uh, decrease. And then in other side, the sugar consumption project projection uh, described that uh, the condition is uh, tend to um, increase. So we should uh, uh, provide uh, some program 
to uh, fulfill the gap uh, between the consumption and the production. Uh, this is the approach we uh, we have to increase the sugar pro production uh, in Indonesia. We have to uh, program uh, in existing area and uh, by uh, extensive uh, ex extensification way. And the strategic step uh, in existing area is about uh, private sugar mill optimization, budget for state ownership sugar mill, and the other is to increase produ productivity and uh, sugar uh, content. And uh, we still uh, face some problem in to increase productivity and uh, sugar sugar content uh, in the uh, farmers uh, group. This is the element of our program. Uh, we define that uh, if we want to make our program success, we should uh, make sure the element uh, uh, provide uh, well. We should define well about the target group, locational factor, <coughs> policy focus and synergy, sustainability, governance, and uh, process management. And we focus uh, in one of our uh, problem about the target group. This is the mapping situation. Uh, existing condition about the composition initiate, initiation. Uh, not all stakeholders involved in the forum, only dominant farmer. Initiation uh, come from the government. And not all participants uh, were actively involved in the program. We expect in the future, all stakeholders will be involved and based on farmer, farmer problems and all the participants collaborate actively and increase the sense of belonging of the program. Uh, for the issues of coordination and facilitation of the platform, uh, the existing condition, uh, the program, uh, the coordination, facilitation, and the platform uh, is a top-down approach and linear approach. We expect uh, in the future uh, it will participatory communication. Uh, about the resource and incentive, the existing uh, condition, uh, limited uh, incentive, uh, and then the expected is uh, government and other stakeholder uh, will uh, provide uh, more uh, resources uh, in an incentive. About the monitoring and evaluation, not uh, existing condition uh, of monitoring and evaluation, not in substantial aspect, just formality aspect, and we, we need uh, holistic monitoring and evaluation. So uh, our uh, pr uh, program is uh, how we can revitalize uh, existing uh, forum towards the effective innovation uh, platform. In the short term, uh, we want to evaluate and re-identify the stakeholder and the problems uh, in the existing uh, forum. And uh, in the long term, we want to develop uh, capacity, formulate the solution, and implement uh, innovation uh, platform uh, we want to develop. I think that's all. Uh, we want to share. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that experience was a bit intense, huh? The whole day and a half. Well, this brings uh, the end to my, my part of the, the workshop. It's been uh, quite challenging getting all of this content in such a short amount of time, but you've really done a fantastic job in facilitating with and enduring all of what I've dished out, especially yesterday. But I hope that um, the sessions this morning, which allowed you to look at it from both from a case study perspective and take it from theory into practice, and now to start etching out how you will apply it in your own context, will actually be useful for you as you move forward and that you'll be able to use these material and these concepts going forward. I'll email you again some more links and background information and you have my contacts as well, so you can always reach out if there are any questions. Um, and other than that, I'll thank you again for your active participation and uh, wish us all a nice lunch. Thank you very much. Thank you.